Well, here I am in Belgium going to the Battle of the Bulge, or where it happened. That says Bastogne, that's where it happened. So, the way I'm geared up, they must assume that I'm a grandson of an American GI or a, a Ranger. Well, nobody stops. So, that means nobody will be thankful, you know, for the wars you do. So, Americans don't do any wars for them, you know, for any other peoples, because nobody will be thankful. They're just sitting in their cars, you know, and they don't care. They just don't care. Don't do any wars for them. Don't believe those politicians, you know, doing war. You're only doing a war for, for them, getting richer, for the financial elites. And you die, and your children won't have a father, and your grandchildren won't have a... Uh, <coughs> here, they all pass, you know, Bastogne. So I'm, I'm not very far from Bastogne, where the Battle of the Bulge went on. Lots of Americans lost their lives, lots of Germans. We're here, you know, to save, the, to liberate the country and save lives and nobody re will respect it, you know. Their grandsons, their granddaughters, you know, their so even their sons, nobody will respect you, nobody will be thankful, forget it. Americans, don't do those wars for them. Nobody. English people don't do their wars for them. You're only doing wars for the for Switzerland getting richer and the banks getting richer. Don't do it. Nobody will be thankful. They will be spitting on you. So I'm here, the grandson of a uh, <clears throat> of a um, an officer of the Royal Navy who died. Well, nobody cares. You know, seeing me like this, they must assume I'm going here. I'm here in the Bastogne, uh, where the Battle of the Bulge raged. Uh, at the same time, I'm here now, in December 1944. So, what is it, like 80 years ago or something? Or 70. So, it's very cold here. You know, I couldn't even get my zipper open again and, and close it of my tent, you know, because it was raining a couple of days before, so it was all wet, so it froze. So, must have been a horrible place to be here during that war, you know. And anyway, if it's that cold, you know, and the uh, the life conditions are very bad, you know, at a certain moment you don't care anymore, you know, if you live or die. And this is what all those battle places had in common. The Eastern Front, where the Germans are, uh, here in the Bastogne, it's all forest and in the Ardennes, it's all forest, it's cold, just like the Eastern Front, There's hardly anybody living here. Uh, and on the beaches in Normandy, you know, to make sure that you die. That, that's what it is. And th they were no heroes, actually. The only heroes are the ones who say, well, I don't do your wars for you. Do it yourself or stand up. Of course, there were no heroes. It was just like a farm, like over there, the Jerry's were in it. You're freezing your balls over here outside and you just want to, to, to get to the oven, you know, to get some, some warmth. So instead of staying here, you, you, you don't mind anymore if you die or not. You just want to get in, get the jerrys out and go to the stove, yeah? That's all. And after the war they all gave him the, um, the label being a hero and they said, well, it's okay, but no heroes get out. No heroes. Maybe you can even see it. Yeah, it says there, Bastogne. It says Bastogne. So I'm going to a museum here. So it's not like, you know, it's minus, it's minus seven degrees Celsius here. I'm glad the sun is getting up. I'm really glad about that. So it was a real clear sky, maybe minus 10 Celsius. Very cold. So, it's not like in the movies, you know, please tell your children, it's not like this, let them show the movies. You know, it's nice, it's fun to see a Hollywood movie, it's really fun, but show them the reality. It's not like John Wayne sitting in a hole, you know, in the ground, and say, oh, I had a cold night, well, let's have some coffee and make some jokes, no. No, you die. If you're minus seven degrees like this night, if you're sitting in a hole, you get hypothermia, you die, that's it. Final. That's it. You die. It's not like that. It's not like in the movies. You die. You know? 
So these guys had to fight for themselves, you know, to get to get the farmhouse. That's all. That's what they were fighting for, for basically, you know, to stay alive. You know, that's what they were fighting for. And rather have a, have the heat of the battle. You get really warmed up, you know, and shoot around and some explosions and all that, than to stay here in the cold. You know, that's what it was all about, basically. And they put you in a situation, you know, the octagon, the Swiss octagon, the Templars, the Nazi Templars and all that, the pharaohs, the aristocrats, they put you in a situation that you have to fight, you don't care anymore. You just don't anything better than stay in this situation. Even risk your life for it, because you're risking your life here as well, you're not staying out in the cold. So, that's all, it's all a lie, everything is a lie. Well, I'm glad there's some sunshine, so I'm going to put my gloves on. I'm freezing. It's very cold, and it's windy. This is a very cold area, it's quite high up. Uh, the Ardennes are cold, so they were picked for the war. It, it was a place picked for a war, just like the Eastern Front, you know, and, and uh, all, those, uh, all those battles, you know. It's, it's every time the same schedule. Wakey, wakey, people. So I'm going to have a watch to uh, see if I can film something in that museum. So in order to open the zipper of my tent, well you can see it here, it's all frozen inside. I had to melt it every like five centimeters with my hands, or got frozen as well. And then I could open a little bit and then again, because I didn't want to yank it open and, and, and break my tent. I'll need it later, you know, if it's raining. You can see it's all icy inside because it was raining two days or three days before, and the rain it melt it, it it froze yeah. So I had to melt it every five centimeters. It took me ages to open it up and to close it down. Yo man. So let's go, eh? Nine nine eleven. It's all it's still minus three degrees Celsius. So again, these guys, you know, they were no heroes. They just obeyed orders. They were just farm guys and just doing what they had to do, just like back back home on the farm. So they were not conscious. So how can you, if you're not conscious about what you're doing, how can you be a conscious hero? You can't. It's impossible. They were not even conscious of what they were doing. They just obeyed orders. So I'm getting there. There's another turret of a uh, Sherman tank. Don't do those war for them. Don't do it. No. Don't do it. There's some more stuff. An 88 gun. German, where is it? There it is. And uh, a lot of other stuff. <clears throat> so here's some indications about the Great War, you know. Well, don't do it because you end up there, you know. Don't do it. They don't talk about so much about this, they talk about the heroes, look at them. Yo, the heroes there, and more heroes. So, this museum is called Bastogne Barracks. Here in an army barracks, it's for free. I'm not going to pay anything, you know, for this sort of things, you know. You, you, they tell you lies anyway, you know. So it says the Battle of the Bulge, uh, 101st Airborne. Bastogne Barracks. Remember that in France, the 222-666, or the six dots here, and it's the inverse pyramid for death. Uh, in that, uh, the, the Templars Chapel restaurant of the, the octagon 2222 is eight, and it's set outside the same as here. It's a chic place here, you know, for the upper class. It's a bar à vin restaurant, you know, a wine restaurant. Or... Yo, man. Well, here's an obelisk, a phallic symbol, you know, wrapped into a, a square sort of thing. 
Well, the square of the pyramid, that's us, the base of the pyramid. So, like, it means, like, we are fucked. And what are all the children doing there with a the phallic symbol? These perverts. The children with the phallic symbol. Do they mean us with this? Or is it just like we are the, uh, our descendants are here? You know, as the, uh, the obelisk is a symbol of the, uh, the Pharaoh domination. It stands for Osiris and the water stands for Isis. I've never seen this before. And there's another one there, here in Bastogne in Belgium. Sun Euroglyph 2 and all sort of fancy shops here. Are oh, you 101 Rangers? This is what you did your war for, you know? But the enemy inside is still making a lot of money and having perverted symbols, 222 Templars, Sun Euroglyphs, and obelisks of ours. You know, that's what you did your war for. You're now heroes, 101. You just obeyed orders. And then you were glad afterwards, yeah, make a hero. Unconscious. Yeah, three pyramid. And one has uh, having another color, the inverse pyramid for war. Oh, this is a war town. What is it? A jewelish, a, a jewelish shop. Yeah, oh, man. And it's like in Auschwitz. You know there are I don't know, so many war museums here. The 101 museum, and you know, it's like in Auschwitz. The whole town is living off it. That's why you did your war for. So next week is the seventh, seventy anniversary of the Battle of the Bulge here on the, the uh, City Hall. It even says here it's going to be important for them. Well I tell you even American flags all over you know well I tell you it's all a lie. If they see me with my backpack hitchhiking nobody will stop and take me. It's all a lie. It's all show. They're lying straight in our faces. Nobody is Nobody is thankful here. Oh, forget about it. Nobody is. There's another one of these perverted things, Rangers. This is what you, give, you gave your life for. And you can see the kids caressing the dick, you know, the phallic symbol. And one of the kids is even pulling her pants down, or his pants down. It's disgusting. These pedophile Freemasons. It's the aristocracy still doing the same thing. Look, they're caressing the dick here. Ah, oh, disgusting. Here, look, the grail, our blood is here. Another one. Look, here's a Sherman, got sort of a hit in the engine. Uh, there's even a 50 cal on it. the American flag how are we thankful to America you know it's all a lie they don't give a damn about it you know don't do that wars for them Americans oh you got another what is it another hit here yo probably all died why is that blue there well, for the war, for the war crown. How many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen stripes. With the blue and the white ones. Of course, it's thirteen. Just a big tourist trap. They all think about the money, you know. They don't even take hitchhikers. It's, it's a bad atmosphere here. But I finally met some nice uh, women who took me hitchhiking, who, who took a detour. Just a general, another pharaoh, of course. Airborne. Well, soldiers, don't do that war for them. So I'm here in one of those museums. It's the usual stuff, a lot of guns and all that, and pictures. And, and the old guy, he said that he, uh, he dug up with a, a metal detector uh, 11 uh, dead Germans.
He's doing that for 50 years or something. Oi, even, even the man himself is there. Oi. I've never seen a thing like this before. It's the first time, yeah. Yeah. Stupid wars. Uh, the Airborne Museum. Let's have a look at the. They get the for free inside as well. Uh, so they even minted, you know, some special coins, you know, commemoration stuff. And uh, like this. So this is what you give your life for, you know. Yeah, look, it costs two times the V, normal V, and one time the V upside down. It's also the square and compass in a way in it, you see? Uh, an insurance, I think, here in Belgium. So everywhere you are here in Bastogne, there are machine gun tourists aiming at you, you know. And then the other one, the barracks, there was actually for free, a big museum. It was an army barracks, but they didn't let me in because of this here, just like in Auschwitz. <laughs> the buckers.